You see all that play and movement? Welcome back to another day off. Today's gonna be a little bit different. We're gonna do sort of a daily vlog here. I got my friend Kirk's E46. He drove it up to me for a handful of repair jobs. We're doing a crankcase ventilation or breather replacement. We're doing an intake reseal with new air intake boots. We're doing an oil filter housing reseal. We're doing a valve cover gasket replacement. We're doing control arm bushings, rear brake service, probably a front brake service too, as well as an engine clean and an oil service. So. What I was thinking is we'll get this car up on jack stands. I'm going to show you how I was taught to inspect these E46s, BMWs, what to look for. And we'll get this thing a good once over. Then we'll get into the diagnosis for the crankcase ventilation issue. Looks like we may have a potential vacuum leak and we'll get cracking. So I'll try to put some timestamps below. You can choose each individual job in case you're curious about that. But with that being said, let's get cracking. Take a look at the power steering fluid. It's up to level. It's metallic, brown, a little poopy colored, but that's okay for now. Plus brake fluid. Brake fluid's a little low too, but the brakes are low on life, so those pistons are sitting further out than uh, factory. So that accounts for that. All right, system two lean, bank two. Misfire detected with low fuel. System two lean, bank one. Misfire detected with low fuel. So, my main focus is this P0171, two lean bank one, and 174, two lean bank two. Now we have access directly into the Airstream. All right, next we're gonna be using my EVAP system leak detector. Now what we'll do Get this fitted into the intake stream. And instead of just throwing parts at it, you know, let's diagnose it. Let's do it the right way. Do it the right way the first time. That way we're just not throwing shit at the wall, hoping it will stick. So that means we have more air coming in than the mass airflow sensor is reading, which means we have a leak behind the mass airflow sensor. All right, so we got the underbody panel moved. You can see this hose up here blowing out smoke. That's the oil drain back hose, and that connects onto the bottom of the breather or the CCV, and that allows the oil separated from the crankcase pressure to drain back into the dipstick tube. So it's got an old brittle and it's broken, causing a vacuum leak across both banks of the intake manifold. So that is a confirmed diagnosis for a too lean mixture on banks one and two. So replacing this hose in addition to the entire breather system will rectify both of the check engine lights that we're looking at for this car. All right, good news. We can pull the tester off, but we will be smoking it one more time in order to verify that our leaks are tight. All right, so what else are we looking for on this car? Well. I always like to check down here in the cracks of the valve cover, look for any oil dripping out onto the exhaust manifold. I also like to hit that and with an inspection mirror. You can see a lot of oil bleeding back behind the oil filter assembly, which is right up here. What happens is that oil filter assembly leaks from its gasket and it drips oil all down onto the side of the block under the intake manifold. We got some leaky power steering hoses. Looks like we have a leaky suction hose. This one is reservoir to cooler. And then we also have another one, cooler to um, rack. We also have a leaky oil dipstick tube, which is a little hard to see, but it punches into the block back there. Other things we're looking for, cracks on the intake boots. However, these ones look pretty solid. We will be replacing them with the intake reseal and the breather. The belt looks to be in good shape. I'm not seeing any cracking. I'm not seeing any evidence of coolant leaks on the expansion tank, upper radiator hose, thermostat, lower radiator hose and sensor look good. 
we can check the water pump from the bottom but other than that everything on the top end looks really good we're definitely looking at an oil pan gasket leak we're going to get this pressure washed off so we can monitor it a little bit better um, but that's really our only main leak we're looking at down here all right so these are the control arm bushings or thrust arm bushings on these e46s they love to tear and you see all that play and movement that's making the entire front wheel shift backwards by you know two or three inches so there's a lot of play in that bushing it's completely torn through we're going to put on new bushings and brackets it's going to make this thing drive like a dream you can see a little bit of seepage on this shock just from over time however if you look up top you can see this surface right here this is the shock mount and it's basically separating it's a two-piece rubber assembly It'll cause a clunk in the rear end eventually, but they're okay for right now. I would maybe put it on the list if you're trying to restore everything on this car, but we're just turning into a good driver again. So it's nothing too serious. You can see this one separated a good amount too, um, but that wraps it up for brakes. See this shock doesn't have that residue, so only that left side has a slow leak. Take a look down here at the rear differential. You can see the axle seals are seeping a little bit. I doubt it's low on fluid. It's not leaking that much. So this is where the differential mounts to the subframe. And it's not, see some micro cracks, but it's not torn, which is great. It causes a rear end clunking symptom. I have it on my other E46, but this one's in good shape. Surprisingly enough too, sometimes the manuals blow them out before the automatics. But that's good news because it's a pain in the ass to replace. Now, one of the last items I wanted to look at was the transmission mounts right here. And then this Guibo, which is the drive shaft coupler. You can see it's torn a little bit. Um, it's not major. It is a replaceable component. It is a wear item. Um, as of right now, we can let it ride, but next time we service it, it would be nice to add it to the list and get that replaced. So that's about it for the usual culprits. Probably start tearing into this thing and then take some time for parts. Day two on Kirk's E46. We confirmed the diagnosis yesterday, found that torn oil drain back tube. Um, we need to get the intake manifold torn apart. We also need to get the oil filter housing torn apart, get the oil out of it. So I want to start on some of these big jobs, get these knocked out, get this thing running well again. Then we'll focus on some of the other stuff. second phone so I can jam tunes in the garage while I'm wrenching. Get this decent valve out of here. This thing looks pretty decent. <laughs> All right. Nice little notable mention on these is there's this pin that drives this valve. This pin will come out and it'll fall down into the intake valves and it will ruin your day and your engine. Also, let's take this moment to just shout everybody out that subscribed. I can't believe I have 100 subscribers already, and I'm over the moon. To be honest, it's always been kind of a dream of mine to be a YouTuber. I've always wanted to. 
I'd love to just do daily vlogs, fixing the hot tub, building a garden, making a chicken coop, turning, tuning up some cars, fixing the boat, doing some house projects, car projects, just anything that involves what I'm doing on my days off. And I just am super appreciative of the support. 100 subscribers is the world to me, so thanks again. All of you guys that watched my previous videos and are tuning into the channel. They always bury them at the worst angles. Da -da -da -da. Oh yeah, some comfy cardboard. Push in on the drain plug, turning out, and then Ninja style. All right, let's let that drain. I'll go hit the filter up top. Loose. Filter looks clean. No metal particulate. Breather to valve cover hose. We need to DC. Clean. Well, There's our culprit, torn oil drain back hose. Definitely seen better days. There she is. So this hose is the culprit. This one goes to the valve cover. This one goes into the intake stream. All right, so that breather's reinstalled in there. Now we're gonna start getting the hoses connected back up and getting the housing settled back down. All right, so dipstick tube. Get this old dipstick tube O-ring off. Oh yeah.
get back at it. Keep at it. I like to spray the hose clamp worm gear too. Real gentle. Let's get cracking on this oil filter housing. Lots more room to work now. Because we're going to be pulling the belt and we're going to be pulling the alternator. And if I remember correctly, we're hanging the power steering pump off the bottom. So we've dropped the power steering pump off the bottom of the bracket, took the alternator out right there and right there are its two mounting points. We need to knock out this bolt, this bolt, this bolt, this bolt, this bolt, this bolt, this bolt. and the whole assembly will come out with the tensioner. Here she comes. Take a look at how much oil is back behind where this oil filter housing sits. There's the oil pan. This thing's just dumping, so we gotta roll this leak out first before we can tackle the oil pan. It takes a little bit more labor.
do we want to sandwich this Vanos line with these two ceiling washers? Don't snug this up until you get the oil filter housing back in the vehicle because then you can pick the perfect angle for it. I need more brake cleaner. Brake cleaner sponsor. L-Ring is a great brand for these. Got it from ECS Tuning. I got the Vanos line from ECS Tuning. Got everything for this car from ECS Tuning. ECS Tuning. Let's work. Let's do, let's do some business, huh? But this time we're gonna hit it with a red Scotch-Brite. Make sure that there's no residue from that old gasket. Pick the old O-ring out, slap the new O-ring on, clicks. Put that puppy back in. We gotta put our idler pulley back on, make sure that dot lines up with the dot on the front of the alternator. Tighten her up. Always make sure your belts are nice and flush on all of the pulleys after you reinstall it. No leftover parts. All right, valve cover.
Let's go squeeze some Curl tea and we're ready to go. Take a break from our regularly scheduled programming. Peep the sunset. Get some fresh rubber on there. Alrighty, let's fire her up. This is the job that's gonna give us the most improvement. This is replacing the control arm bushings. Now, the control arm presses in through this bushing. You can buy the bushing separate or you can buy the entire bracket. I prefer buying the bracket, then you don't have to use a press. You don't have to press the old bushings out and press the new ones in. Just pry off the old bushings, hammer these on with a mallet and some glass cleaner. Whack these bolts out. arm comes down, bolts go back in, get that purchase point, Got it. Hell yeah. Glass cleaner. That way it evaporates. Doesn't lubricate that bushing forever. And gonna press this on. You just gotta smack the shit out of that thing. All right, let's try. All right, she 
she's on. Now for the other side. All right, let's uh, run a tap. All right, I grabbed a 10 mil 1.5 die, and we're just gonna chase these threads. It's nice and clean now. So now we just need to tap the unibody real quick. All right, we got our uh, 10 mil by 1.5 tap. I got a square drive socket that just makes life a little bit easier. Oh yeah, night and day difference. Runner up. Oh yeah. Beautiful. Fuck yeah. Other side's in. Let's go. Next, we're going to be doing a front brake service on this piggy. So, first things first, want to pop off this clip. I like to pry from the wheel hub out, and that clip will come off. Next, I like to take a pry bar down under the outside pad and just push. And that'll push the piston in. Then you can reach in a little further, get another bite, push the piston in even more. That way you don't have to compress it as much when you're doing the brakes. Break that loose. Come down. Break the other one loose. All right, then the caliper will come out. Now we can take out this outside pad. See how much meat was left. They're almost gone. This car was also pulling when it was braking, so we need to do these brakes. Take this slide and just pull it towards you, and that'll come out. These two dowel pins slide inside those boots. So we'll take the slide out, take the inside pad out. I'm gonna rip this out. Okay, there's our old rotor. Compressing that piston, take a pair of channel locks, push that piston down till it stops. Look at that, beautiful. Slides with a brush. Ready to go, baby. Push those pins back in. So for brake parts today, we got Techstar. It's a great OE pad for BMW. I highly recommend them. Don't go with anything cheap. These cars don't take cheap pads. Zimmerman rotors. Zimmerman rotors are the bomb. They are made in Germany. They're really good for BMWs. The coating is awesome. They last forever. Buy Zimmerman Tech Stars if you're doing a BMW brake job. I've done a lot of these. These are the best components to use. Take my inside pad. I like to do that first. You can do it with the slide on. These brakes don't need to be greased. You don't need to grease them. I don't. Like so. Drop it in. Fit it to where it sits flush against that caliper. Like that. Boom. Looking good. Fresh pads. Give it a zap with the gun. Boom. Slides back on. Line the bolts up. There's one. There's two. Give those one last snug. 
take a pry bar and just push, boom. Make sure that the pad does not hang over the outside of the rotor. If that's the case, you have the wrong pad or the wrong rotor. All right, we got the front brake service knocked out. Pistons are compressed in, everything's tight, ready to go back together. A notable mention before we move on to the rear. If we look at the brake fluid reservoir, we're sitting pretty high. Before it was down by this halfway crease. So what we need to do is we need to pull this cap off. We need to evacuate a little bit of fluid out. That way when we have both front and rear pistons compressed in with new pads, we don't overflow this reservoir and cause it to bleed out of the cap. I'm just going to pull a little bit of fluid. All right, that should be sufficient, I think. We'll keep an eye on it when we compress those pistons. With that being done, let's go uh, move our way to the rear brakes. Pry bar, flathead screwdriver works great. It's off. Everything else, you can just again pop that outer pad out. Pull the slide, pop the inner pad out, boom, we're good to go. Again, I don't grease pads on these cars unless they come factory greased. If you believe otherwise, please comment and let me know what you think, what your theories are. I mean, if you live somewhere with more ice, maybe uh, salt on the road, snow, then I could see it. But we're over here on the coast. We don't get much snow. So I don't see the need for it. I've never had an issue with it and I've done several hundred of these brake jobs I think over the, the years of me working at the shop. <laughs> Cleaning up these pins. S slide back in. Line those pins. All parts are not created equal. Gonna get something different from different manufacturers, so. Boom. Cool. Now we need to do our sensor. These, all right. Brake sensor is in and good to go. A lot of dirty shit in there. Okay, now we go to the next side. Spring clip out. Pop that pad out, pop this pad out. Check the clearances. Give it a tap. We are good to go, baby. Now there was one buggered up wheel, lug bolt. I don't have a tap for it, but I do have this thread chaser, which is gonna clean up the threads on this lug bolt. Hopefully that'll be enough to get a nice, good fit back onto the hub. It's better than nothing. Always do star pattern, equal and opposite. So I was about to rotate this last tire and it's flat. Kirk said he had to put air in it. So let's put some air in it, find the leak and see if we can fix it. All right, 30 PSI. A 
collectibles. There we are. Right there. See those bubbles? See those bubbles coming out? So, if we look, grab a flashlight. Right underneath the wear bar, I saw a little bit of a tear mark. Hit it with some soap. Boom. So it's barely noticeable. It's a small leak. I'm going to teach you how to put a plug in this thing and fix your tire. I got this from a tool supplier, but you can find them at Walmart, some gas stations, auto parts stores. So what you'll need is a reamer to open up the hole and you'll need a plug install tool, which has this little hole with a slit at the top. You'll need some plugs and you'll need a little bit of lube. First thing first, take the reamer, put it in your hole, which is right here, and we want to open it up. Move this reamer up and down. So we got it started, right? We got a little bit of end sticking out. Like I said, I like to take a pair of needle nose pull this out till it's even. Now what this is going to do is we're going to put this plug inside of that hole. I'm going to lube it up real quick. So we're going to take this hole, right? We're going to push this in. These plugs are going to fold up and then once we're in a sufficient amount, we're going to pull out really fast. And this plug is going to be pulled. This tool is going to pull out and there's a little crack in the tip of that tool and the plug is going to get released as we pull it out and that plug will stay and our tool will come out. It's a little hard with higher tire pressure but we should be able to get it. Give it one last ream. Then pull it. Plug to the hole. Push. Push, push, push. So you get the plug nice and smooshed down like that. There's not much height sticking out, maybe half inch or so. Then pull as hard as you can. And there we are. Check it with some soap. We have no more bubbles. Take some cutters. Cut the plugs off. Now this is a temporary fix. This is not the DOT approved fix. That's going to be a patch plug and that's done by removing the tire from the wheel. However, we're working in my garage. I don't have a tire machine, so we're doing it this way. And then again, check with soapy water. Make sure you're not getting any bubbles. We're actually getting a little bit of bubble right here, so I'm going to pull this and do it again. So. Time to redo it. I can't let him leave with leaking tires. Now before I pull that all the way out, I'm going to get my next plug set up. So far so good, no bubbles. I like to keep one of these plug kits in my truck with a little mini cigarette lighter air compressor. That way if you get a flat and you have to wait for a tow, be self-sufficient and do it yourself. It's not too difficult, pretty easy. Maybe a pair of needle nose pliers. And that's tight. We're gonna put some air in it, double check it one last time, but that plug should hold. And it might hold until he gets tires. Right on, we're good to go. And that is how you successfully plug a tire.
All right, so that's going to be a wrap for this one. I also adjusted the washer nozzles on his car. We swapped out the HID headlights for some factory halogens. We also pressure washed the top and bottom side of the vehicle. He was a real happy customer, drove it home 15 hours without a single issue. So I think it was a win-win for both. As far as what else we got coming up on the channel, I got over $500 worth of parts ordered up for this uh, 330i here, the Will It Run car. So I'm real excited, valve cover gasket, coil boots, spark plugs, water pump, thermostat, intake boots, breather, we're gonna get after it. So if you've made it this far, you are the real MVP. Thank you very much for watching, subscribing, liking, commenting. All of you guys have been great. The support on the channel has been absolutely wonderful. I can't thank you enough. So thanks again for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed this day off DIY and I'll see you on my next day off.